The Senator from Vermont. And President, uh, I'm glad to hear the distinguished Senator, my colleague and friend, speak about the problems on the um, southern border. I, I feel for President Biden because he inherited a horrible mess from his predecessor, uh, a man who said that he would build a wall, which he didn't, a wall that would uh, stop immigration, which he didn't, uh, that he would build it saying he would get the money from Mexico, knowing that he would not get one cent from Mexico, but he would repeated that falsehood hundreds of times around this country. And um, gave us, and, and also actually took money away from housing for families on a military basis, families living in uh, substandard housing. The money that the Congress had voted to repair that housing to make it safe, to remove lead, mold, and so on. He took that money to build the wall, which, as I said, he claimed that Mexico would pay for. I wish what we had done when this, uh, when I was chairman of the Judiciary Committee, we passed by it's about a two to one margin after months and months and months of debate and work, an immigration bill here in the Senate, Republicans and Democrats voting for it something that could have solved all this problem. It went over to the House of Representatives. There were enough votes to pass it there, but it would not be a majority of the Republicans. And the Republican speaker said they could not bring up the bill, even though it passed, because it was violating a, a rule very sacred to them, a rule named after Dennis Hastert, a former speaker. And they could not violate the great respect they had for Dennis Hastert and his rule, and so even though it passed, they did not bring it up. Of course, it's subsequent to that that uh, Dennis Hastert went to prison for child abuse. Now, on another matter, an entirely different matter, I want to speak about a dear friend. U.S. Second Circuit Court Judge Peter Hall, who died on March 11th. And ever since then, I've thought back to the conversation I had with him, just like many, many conversations I've had with Judge Hall over the years, but I had one just a few days before he died. He was telling me about the health uh, concerns he had, very serious ones. But he was going to try one other thing that uh, weekend. We hope may give him a longer uh, spell of life. Well, it didn't. It's only a matter of days after that last, as I said, one of many conversations I had with him. A few days after that last conversation, he died. He died on March 11th, and one week after announcing his decision to take senior status. And Chief Judge of the Second Circuit, Judge Deborah Ann Livingston, gave a remarkable tribute when she acknowledged his death. Speaking for the court, Chief Judge Livingston said, Judge Hall was our beloved colleague, and this is a grievous loss for our court and for all of our judges. Over the course of nearly 17 years on the Court of Appeals, Judge Hall distinguished himself as a thoughtful and humane jurist. He was generous with his colleagues, ever considerate in matters both big and small. Judge Hall was committed to public service. He taught us all by his example. He was a kind and very dear friend this is a sad day for the judges of the Court of Appeals. Now, a deeper read of the two-page announcement offered more insight to help us understand what made Judge Hall the exceptional jurist that he was. She noted that he left a lasting mark on a generation of law clerks. And Chief Judge Livingston shared an anecdote as told by one of those clerks. 
He said, one winter morning, we were working away in chambers, and he had not turned up. Not unusual, but we were all wondering if something had happened. He rode in midday with his dirty work pants and torn flannel shirt. In other words, no more haggard than usual. He explained that he had taken his truck through the woods that morning after taking care of his horses, but had gotten stuck. Luckily, he had an ax. So it was only a matter of chopping down a few trees to put under the truck tires for traction. He freed himself and made his way into chambers like it was nothing. Just another day in the Second Circuit. Chief Judge Livingston repeated that story told by one of Judge Hall's clerks. But you know, the story speaks of the person Judge Hall was. Never too important to carry out the chores of the day, never too far from the Vermont woods that he loved so much. I know how many times I would talk with him and we might talk a little bit about the law or things like that, then we'd quickly go to tales of other Vermonters we knew, things they had done, places that we liked, especially in our state. And I thought as more tri tributes have flooded in, the most common remembrances of Judge Hall include words such as decent, gentle, and caring. His long career was spanned years in both private practice and as a federal prosecutor before joining the bench, demonstrated his commitment to the rule of law. It was con a commitment that he showed early on when he served as president of the Legal Aid Clinic while still earning his Juris Doctorate at Cornell Law School. When I was chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee in 2003, I was proud to recommend Peter Hall for the circuit court vacancy left by the passing of another dear friend, Judge Fred I. Parker. And it, no surprise to me that his nomination was met with very little resistance either from the White House or from Republicans and Democrats alike on the Judiciary Committee. I teased him sometimes about the fact he was born in Hartford, Connecticut, but moved to Vermont at the age of 11. Did that make him a real Vermonter? And the reaction I got from him was, Patrick, my great-great-grandfather served as governor of Vermont in the mid-1850s. I had to admit, Judge had me there. He always considered Vermont his home, and we're grateful that he did. Marcel and I enjoyed our friendship, and we send our sincere condolences to his wife, Maria Dunton, his five children, and his five grandchildren. I would also note in, in concluding that Judge Hall's former law clerks released a touching tribute. And I ask consent, I will ask consent in a moment, to be printed in the record along with a list of their names. Over 60 law clerks. And I ask consent that the conclusion of my remarks, their statement and their names be included in the record. Without objection. Madam President, Vermont and the legal community of the federal bench have lost a great champion of justice. As Chief Judge Livingston concluded in her statement, Peter Hall lived a life of fidelity to principles, kindness to individuals, and service to the human community. He'll be greatly missed. This is a great truth. Madam President, I yield the floor.